I think one thing that it's really important for museum staff to know is that even if a person with autism looks like they're not connected, they may not be making eye contact, they may have some stereotypical movements such as hand flapping or rocking back and forth, that they generally are taking in all the information that's around them. And some of those mechanisms are actually ways they process the information so that you can assume that someone with autism is taking in what you're saying and is appreciating what you're saying. They may not be able to communicate or respond back to you in what you envision as a typical fashion. But if you speak to them clearly, short sentences are often better just for auditory processing. And don't assume that they're not taking in the information. Speak to them as well as to their other family members. Um, be aware of where there are quiet places in the museum so that if someone with autism is overwhelmed, either visually or by noise, bright lights, buzzing fluorescent lights, that there's a quiet place that they and their family can go um, to calm down. And it doesn't have to be a formal room that's set aside. In many places, just in my personal experience, there are quiet corners in the museum in a stairwell, something like that, where it's not as heavily trafficked and a family can be directed there. People with autism also have very strong visual skills, but they also sometimes have visual processing difficulties along with those strong visual strengths so that rapid or unexpected movements can be disturbing to them, as can be a sensitivity to touch, so that a museum guard, for example, might want to take extra care in approaching someone with autism to not reach out to them and grab them by the arm, for example, to stop them from doing something, and not approach them rapidly and sort of reach for them but to approach a little more cautiously and maybe explain what they're doing as they approach.